Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read the problem, and then press play, and we'll solve it together. All right, so we're told that the voltage um, used by most households can be modeled by a sine function where the maximum voltage is 120 volts. Okay, and there are 60 cycles every second. Okay, so which equation best represents the value of the voltage as it flows through the electric wires where T is time in seconds? All right, so if the maximum is 120, that's, that's, what, that's where this 120 is coming from in each case. They're just saying that's that's our amplitude, and that just tells us that imagine you have a, your typical sine function. Now, typically the sine function, parent function, just basic sine function, something like this. It takes about two pi whatever, two pi seconds, radians, whatever we're looking at, to complete a cycle, um, and that matches the circumference of a circle, of course. And this fluctuates between uh, the highest sine value at one and the lowest and negative one. The amplitude is describing that distance from the midline, the middle of the function, to the max and min. But if you stretch it, if you multiply it by 120, that takes the function and stretches it so that its highest value is 120 and its lowest value is negative 120. So the amplitude is always going to be 120 that describes exactly what's happening right here. But we want to understand um, which of these actually gives us 60 cycles every second. So to do that, uh, let's just look at two examples. Let's look at choice two and we'll look at this value, and then choice four, we'll look at this value, 120 pi. So first of all, I'm gonna call this k. So in this case, k is 60, and in this case, k is 120 pi. Now, what k does is it tells us the value, we call it the frequency often. k is actually the connection, it's two pi divided by the period of your sine function, okay? So it's two pi over the period. And what does that mean? Well, in choice two, let's look at this example first. If k is 60, then 2 pi divided by the period, I'll call it p, is 60. I'm going to swap these two numbers, 60 and p, multiply both sides by p and divide by 60. And I get p equals 2 pi over 60. 2 divided by 60 is 1 over 30, right? And that's pi over 30. So this tells me something, that it takes pi seconds, essentially, 3.14 seconds, we're in seconds now in this problem to, t to complete 30 cycles of the wave. And the, f and the frequency, sorry about that, the frequency is the reciprocal of the period, I'll call it F. It's 30 cycles, right, every pi seconds. But that's not what we want. We want to look at um, 60 cycles every one second. And in choice four, this will be the answer because if K is 120 pi, Let's say k is 120 pi, that equals 2 pi over the period. Okay, so if we solve for p, I wrote period over there, and p over here, let me be consistent. So if we solve for the period, the period's going to equal um, 2 pi divided by 120 pi. And here when we divide, so it's a little sloppy there, the pi's cancel out. Pi divided by pi is 1, and 2 over 120 is 1 over 60. And what that means is you've got one, um, it takes 1 second to complete 60 cycles, or the frequency would be, the reciprocal, 60 cycles every 1 second. Now to understand that on a graph, let's just take a look so you can understand this. Let's say we have y equals what was it, 120 sine of 120 uh, pi x. Right? Is that right? Let me see. Okay. Wow. So we can't see anything here. So let's fix our window. Um, let's say that x goes from, let's do one cycle, zero. Uh, and we said it takes, <coughs> it's a complete 60 waves every one second. Uh, let's, let's go to one second. And let's make our step, I don't know, uh, 0.1. Can we see that? Let's see, pi. Does that help us? No. Oops, still not able to see. So this is the y-axis. Let's go from, uh, so what's our, our so we go from negative, let's say 130 to positive 130. Okay, still not better, but you can see a little bit more. So here, from zero up to one, if you counted the number of individual sine waves, you would get 60 of them, right, within this one second. And our, our amplitude is stretching all the way up to 120, maybe I squish that down so it looks a little bit cleaner. That looks a little bit better. 
So you can see there are 120 cycles, a bunch of cycles here. Oh, sorry, there are 60 cycles here within, let me zoom out, one second. That's what it looks like. So if I lower this number, let's just see what happens to 12. Well, now k is 12 pi, and if k equals 12 pi, and 12 pi equals 2 pi over the period, uh, so the period is going to equal 2 pi over 12 pi, which is um, 2 pi over 12, which is 1 6. And that means within one second, there are six waves. Here we can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six waves. So this number helps us figure out essentially the frequency and period of our function. I hope this helped.